This week in VCT, champions have officially started, everyone's pickums are now boomed, and now there are some rumors swirling around. So let's talk about some rumors that has been swirling around, and it's mainly on three Turkish players. First start off with Izzy, who has been in Valorant for quite a while sometime. He is rumored to be joining BBL Esports. Now, all of these rumors are from one Twitter account, which I can't really pronounce because I'm pretty sure it is Turkish, so it will be on the screen below here. Um, but if this does happen, I'll be interested. I'm definitely going to be giving a, co a close eye on BBL. Just because that Izzy, he has been, like I said, he has been in the Valorant scene for a while now. I mean, he was part of basically the first the first Superstar Turkish team um, in 2021 with Supermassive Esports. And he has been there since then. So, I don't know if it's maybe contract jail or something, which kind of is a bit concerning if that is the case. But, if this does happen, I think this is a great sign for, for Izzy's career. And I do hope that, you know, he will do well if he does join BBL. But I haven't heard anything else about it, but hopefully it is true. As for the person who he who he is replacing, Kishner X, he's rumored to be joining Na'Vi, which is interesting. Now, it is, I, it is basically almost kind of confirmed, maybe, not too sure, that artists will be... Uh, will be leaving Na'Vi. So, Kishner Rx possibly may be replacing him. That's an interesting shout. Kishner Rx has been... Alright, I'll be honest with BBL. Not really, like, the best. But, um, yeah, it's... I mean, he, he, he's just alright. He's just a, a very alright, well-rounded duelist player. He has had some good moments. Um, but maybe it's just as a team just not being up to standards. Or maybe it's just his play style. Not too sure. But he's not like a, like a cracked Turkish player. He's a very consistent one though. Like he can play with the team. He can obviously fill in the duelist role if needed or whoever. But I, I, he's mainly well known for Jet and Rays and that's really about it. So if Na'Vi wants to cook up some wacky ass comp, they can. But it might maybe not happen. But if this is true... Oh, I'll be interested to see how that goes. So obviously, last time they had a Turkish duelist, they were very, very well. They were better than this. I'll say that. So um, I mean, at least they made it to both to all the uh, yeah to both international fans, um, in masters and champs. So, but you know, maybe you know, there's another possibility that Kishnaks could be good. But if I'm just I'm just not too sure if this is true or not. And the final one is for Team Liquid and Burzy, also from Supermassive Esports, is rumored to be joining this team. This is a very interesting change. Now, Burzy, like I mentioned, is from Supermassive Esports. I'm pretty sure he plays the initiator role. Or maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I actually can't remember. Maybe it's a, it may, maybe it is a controller. But either way, um, he will be most likely maybe be replacing Enzo. I mean, because it is, I mean, it is rumor that Enzo might be leaving Team Liquid, which is, which is questionable. Um, I don't think Mystic is gonna be going anywhere, so I think he will be basically doing, or you know, just like taking Enzo's role. Um, I don't think he has ever IGL'd as well. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he has, but um, if that's the case, I'm just not too sure this is a correct roster move for Team Liquid. But if it does happen. Is Burzy now the new IGL? Is it Yampi or is it Nats? Because I think there's rumors that Nats might be the IGL if they cook up some certain roster. But I don't know because, I mean, it's a bit of a question mark of who's going to be the IGL because we know that Enzo would be leaving the team most likely. So who's going to be the IGL? Um, is it going to be Nats? Is it going to be Yampi again? Not too sure. All right, now let's now move right now to some important news and some roster uh, news as well. Klaus, he has now officially left crew after basically being there since since its inception. I'm pretty sure for three years, four years even. So he has been with that team for a while now, but they have now fine, but they have now um, separate ways. Uh, which is quite sad because being Klaus, he's been a very integral part of crew. He, um, I mean, he was part of crew when they made their match around champs. He was also part of that team as well when they won in the LCQ last year. So, Klaus, he has been in that team for a while and has obviously lived the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. 
but we'll see if he does go anywhere next time. I hope I do hope he does because he is a very capable player. I mean, hell, look what happened to like Nagzed, for example, or Murs, or Delzig. All all those three players are in one team, possibly making it to ascent, or well, possibly as well making it to tier one. Um, with Ascension, so Klaus can definitely maybe do maybe do the exact same thing, but we'll see where Klaus goes. For BBL now, the head coach of the team, Mekwanka, has now, has not gone inactive, which is interesting, but I mean, I thought BBL season wasn't too bad, I'll be honest. It was definitely better than last season, if not maybe exactly the same, but I'm quite surprised that Mekwanka is now a restricted free agent, it looks like. I don't know where he could go. He could maybe go back to the Spanish region, maybe. Or if he does want to continue to tier 1, he could maybe go to another team in, in EMEA, especially. Maybe like a team that definitely needs cohesion, like Koi, for example. I mean, hell, I mean, Barbar, he's rumored to be gone um, after uh, basically uh, as soon as his contract is up. So he could maybe replace Barbar at Koi, which is a real possibility. But, I mean, from how McWonka was to BBL, I thought he was alright, I'll be honest. I think he was pretty good. But, obviously, that is just how that works. But, I mean, I do hope that that, that um, McWonka does find a new a new home. Because, I mean, it's he's actually a pretty good coach. I think he coached um, KC Sports, I think, for a bit as well in Spain. And now he's, out in, now he's in BBL and actually almost got the team into playoffs for uh, Master Shanghai. So... Yeah, it's just, it's a, a disappointing, but hopefully he does find a home. Now next is Zayda Division, as they have announced that Crow has now, has now transitioned now from um, a streamer, as he was originally a playing coach. I I mean, to be fair, Zayda had a shocking season. Definitely a season I was not expecting, just because of, I had a lot of hype over this team, just because of the changes that they did. They replaced, in my opinion, were the two weakest players in that team of Ten and Crow. And that was obviously no disrespect to any to any of those players. Um, Crow, he was alright as a coach, but he didn't really have a lot of impact. And I'm pretty sure it was mainly literally just Carlo and Junior, I'll be honest, making all, just call in the shots. I'm not too sure what Crow did behind the scenes in, in the coaching role, but he's now a streamer for now for Zay Division, which is at least good. So at least he's now still part of the Zay Division family. But it doesn't really matter because he didn't really create a lot of impact, I'll be honest, for the coaching staff, because I think it was mainly Kalau and Junior. So I think he's gonna be I so I think he's gonna be joining 10 and XQQ, I believe, as a streamer for Zay Division. So there's probably gonna be maybe some good content coming out from Zay Division if you are really a fan of Zeta. But so, yeah, I guess look out for that on their, on their socials. And the final one is RQ, as they have let Elmi Moore as a restricted free agent. So he's still, so he's still part of the team, but obviously he is, he, he is inactive. I hope that Elmi Moore finds a home if he does leave RQ. I don't think he will, because I think RQ wants to keep him around because he's such a promising... Oh, he, he is a very well-known Indonesian uh, player. So, and obviously in Indonesian org, they need some more Indonesians. I mean, I I mean, there definitely are players, especially like in Boom Esports or Auto Ego that that they can maybe have a look at. Um, I mean, definitely one maybe is like Famous or Berserx in, in my opinion as well. But I can obviously understand why they would rather have a look at some, maybe some other options, but... If Omi, but if Elmi Moore does actually leave, that'll be I'll be very very surprised about that. Could maybe Blaze King maybe come in for RQ possibly, but I'll be very surprised if, if Elmi Moore does leave. Where could he go theoretically? Because I don't think he would really. Don't think any Korean team would really want him. So Genji, DRX, or T1 are out. Don't think Paper X really wants him because they already have a really star stable roster unless something drastic happens in that team. Could he maybe go to Global? Could he? I definitely know Zayd or DFM in my opinion. So the only options are like Team Secret maybe, but I'm guessing Secret might want to still say Filipina, which is fair. So that might be out of the water. Tan Esports maybe, because obviously they have, they, they now have obviously two quote unquote Korean players, both of them are actually American, I'm pretty sure. Um, so maybe there, but I mean, the only option I can really think of for Elmi Moore is maybe Glow Esports or Bleed. 
Those are the only like two options if he doesn't want to say in, in, in RNQ, but I think to support his career, I think he should still say in RNQ, but we'll see what really happens in his career. Let's now move now to the results first off with America's for and first off with Curry Sports as they, as they did lose against GRX, but they actually made it quite competitive. And I think they have also now won the most maps that they did compared to last year, where last year they didn't win any maps. So they made this very, very competitive. Kaznet, yes, was MVP, but Game of One, I'll be honest, the crew were, were amazing. I'll be honest. I mean, it was a bit of a refresh air. I mean, th that first map absolutely destroyed DRX, and Fritch was a piss. They, they, they dismantled DRX, but then the final two maps, they kind of got back to their own, to their own true ways. But I think, th I think this is, this should be a very good performance either way from crew. I mean, I, I expected to be a 2-0 victory for DRX. It's not expecting crew to be this, uh, I wouldn't say this dominant, especially on Abyss, but I would say to be this competitive against DRX, who are maybe top five, top, top, like they're definitely playoff contending a team. So with crew to make that competitive and have DRX sweat a bit was very, very impressive. So crew should definitely give themselves a pat on the back. But now that they're now in possible elimination, maybe they should start sweating by now. Another team which is also on possible elimination is Sentinels as they did lose against Gen G. As Gen G did get the revenge on them. Sarsi was MVP and Sarsi was maybe their best player in this game. Zell says he was kind of nowhere. Tens had some alright moments. John QT has just fallen off. Zekin, he struggled. He was nowhere in this game. It was just saucy everywhere. Like, just basically putting the team on his back. So, I am very disappointed on this team. Because I thought we were going to possibly maybe have the Madrid Magic. But, I guess we are having that Sage 2 slump as... Sentinels had, especially at the very end of stage two and inside the playoffs as well. So I guess that's happening uh, considering for them. I'm not too sure what's really happening um, in, in our team internally, but it is a bit of a worry considering that the team FPX adversity are looking really, really good and really, really competitive. So Sentinels fans, even though they are fan favorites, should be sweating. And the final team is Love Your Ton, as they did win against Talon Esports. Aspas was MVP. And I am not surprised by this whatsoever. To be fair, Map 1 was very, very competitive on Bind. And there were some questionable moments from Love Your Ton, especially like overheating a bit and getting caught out by Talon. But they adapted very, very well to the aggression. King was popping off on Bind. It was, it was so cool to see him go well. And I just want to give him his all. A little uh, mention there because he because he was so good even as the IGL. It's difficult as the IGLs especially because you're so focused on your on your team that you're not only really focused on your on yourself. So for King to do to to do that well on buying and as well on map two was impressive to watch. So I think Lev are looking still looking really really good. They are, they were up against Talon Lindo which. Everyone kind of expected to be a bit of a like maybe a 13th to 16th team or even 9th to 12th team maybe. Definitely around that region. So I guess it wasn't really a bit of a challenge. It just should be a very easy group for Love Yatan. But China have some other ideas. And speaking of China, let's talk about them. Billy Billy Gaming. As they did lose against Fnatic, but they did make it quite competitive. YZ was MVP. Um, Artists. Not going to go bold this time, which is maybe a good sign for him, but pretty unlucky, I'll be honest, for all of us, um, for all of us, but, um, Billy Billy Gaming, they were pretty good, uh, maybe not really where I expected him to be when I originally thought, but, I mean, they kind of just were, you know, where I expect them to be, I'll be honest, a bit, just a very, a team that could surprise some people, but we're probably going to struggle against these hard teams like Fnatic. But with who, uh, I can't remember who's actually in their group right now. Um, I think it's actually Crew Esports. That, that is a possibility. Billy, Billy Billy Gaming could possibly win this game. And maybe join the other Chinese team who has already won um, at Champs. Trace Esports. What a, what a performance from them. 
They did win against Team Vitality. Liu Kang was MVP. He was just a flanking god. I'll be honest against um, against Vitality. That he, he was just being a thorn on their backside. Um, but I will say this though. Yes, everyone's pickups are now gone, including mine, which I will say it's gone now. I mean, I'm definitely not going to get 100% now. But I will say that I'm not surprised because both of these teams are considered dark horses in their own region. And both of these teams also have one player who have been to champs, save for Vitality and Bianc from Trace. So obviously there were going to be nerves coming into this game already. But I think the main difference of this team was Liu Kang. He was just flanking, lurking every single round, and they didn't even read it. It was just, it was phenomenal. I mean, it shows that, yes, Liu Kang was a part of Tai Lu, which was maybe, is maybe considered as one of the worst teams in VCT partnership. When you actually have a good structure, good players, and good coaches around you, you can pop off easily. And that is what happens with Liu Kang, which I'm very, very impressed about. So definitely big shout out to him. Uh, but for Trace, this is a great start for them. I mean, yes, they're both in Leviathan. They could surprise Lev, which could easily happen. Knowing the Chinese teams, they can easily um, just easily just come out in the water and just surprise all all all, all the Western teams. Like how Trace Esports could win against by uh, could win could maybe win against Leviathan if they continue this performance. But I'll be uh, now that is when I'll be shocked if if Trace Esports does win against Leviathan. That is when I'm going to be like, holy shit, this team is actually amazing. And maybe their region is just holding them back a bit because they have played against each other for quite a lot like throughout the season. So for them to come up with these new ideas is definitely something. So amazing job there from Trace. We'll see how they go against Lev. Fun plus Phoenix, I am still pretty high on this team. Yes, they did lose against Team, uh, against team Heretics. Ion, yes, was MVP. But they made this game really competitive. They obviously went to the third map. They just narrowly lost as well. And I was actually thinking FPX could possibly win against Team Heretics. Because the thing is, is that Miniboo, he's a, we know that he's a phenomenal player. But he just overheats. Like when he gets frustrated, he overheats. And hell, he even fell off on Abyss as well. For FPX to take advantage of that, especially Ion, who had maybe the game of his life, was amazing to watch. So, like, like Autumn also had some great moments as well. Um, Berlin was still cooking up some wacky-ass strats. Life, yeah, we didn't see a lot of life, I'll be honest. Life was a good bit quiet. It was mainly Ion, who was basically the shining light of this team. And it shows that this team are extremely competitive. Maybe not in their domestic region of China, which I was believe they did struggle, but against like international like uh, teams, they are they could be really scary and could as well beat like beat Sentinels as well. So I am not like saying that Sentinels will lose against FPX. I think it's going to be pretty close between these two teams that anyone will be expecting. So if you are a Sentinels fan, like I said beforehand, you guys better start sweating because this team is really fucking good. So, but I mean, obviously it could, I mean, hell, FPX could easily choke knowing, knowing them and be out of the tournament. But because of, because of what we've seen from this team in Tokyo, uh, in Shanghai, and a bit of Madrid as well, because I felt like, like they have also a bit, they have improved a bit during Madrid. This team could maybe sneak their way into the playoffs if they maybe had the right groups, because this group of group death is um, interesting. They have both Masters winners, they have Team Heretics as well. So, with this team already going toe to toe against Heretics and even got a map off them, which no one was really expecting, it's very, very impressive from this team. All right, Vitality. They did lose against Trace. Trex was MVP. And if I had to give an award to the most to the most consistent player in the EMA region, it has to be Trex. He has been so consistent for Vitality. But it won't change the fact that they did lose against Trace Esports. 
Now there were some shining lights. There was there were some good moments um, from Vitality, especially with Trex just popping off. Safe also having some good moments as well. But it, I mean, Kick struggled. I think like I remember, I, I I remember I tuned into I think map two or something, and they struggled. They really really like like he struggled a lot. And to be fair, like Kix and Runner, both of them are still pretty young. And this was their first international event playing in front of a home crowd for the first time ever. I mean, Sender, Trex, and Safe they have as well, but most of them were in locked in. And hell, Trex has actually played as well um, in Champs, I just realized, I'm pretty sure, with Guild Esports, I believe. So he knows as well about stakes being really, really high. Um, but at the same time as well, like this team could, I, I just I, I, I like, a, I like a make or break team where they could go really, really well and really deep into tournaments, but as soon as there's a slight sense of cracks in this team, they start to fall. So that's where I'm a bit worried for this team as well, where when they start losing progressively, it starts to show a lot more cracks in this team. But we'll see. If, uh, I do hope that, that they do bounce back because I think they are a very, very good team. But... To be fair, from the performance that they had against Trace, they could be out pretty soon. Team Heretics, they did, they did win against Fun Plus Phoenix. Rians was just the backbone of this team. He was so good. The Some of the shock darts that he did was phenomenal. Uh, he was just an amazing server. He was really, really good. Uh, it's just disappointing that Miniboo didn't really live up the hype. Boo was alright. Benji Fish, he had some questionable moments. It was mainly the Turkish duo of Rians and Wu was basically carrying this team. So, very, very impressed with oh, um with both of them. But, I'll give Miniboo the benefit of the doubt because this was his first true international event. Um, I don't, Actually, no, no, no. Well, no. He did play in Madrid, I believe. He was actually alright there, actually. So... He has actually played in front in front of a home in front of a crowd. Actually, I just realized, but considering that as a champs, it's a bit of a different environment now. It's basically all stakes now. Wh whoever wins, you are the best team in twenty twenty four. So, and considering that this team have improved from kickoff to uh, Madrid, Sage One, Shanghai, and Sage Two as well. They've always been somewhere in the top five. It really does put some pressure on on these players to perform well. And I'm glad that they did win against FPX, but they're now versing against Gen G. So we'll see how that goes. Are they gonna get the revenge on Gen G? There's a lot of weird matchups, rematch as well going on, but I mean they should be very competitive against Gen G, but obviously we'll see what happens. And the final team is Fnatic, as they did, as they did win against Billy Billy Gaming, saving artists of being bold. Chronicle, yes, was MVP, and I mean this was just a flawless, normal Fnatic performance. That's really all I could say. It was just a very standard Fnatic performance from them, just dominance and uh, and dominant and dominant. Yes, there were definitely some interesting and weird plays from this team as well. But it was just normal fanatic. That's all I could really say. Um, what else? I mean, the hero he was very, very good, especially on bind. Very, very, very consistent, especially that clutch as well to end off the the game as well. That was very, very good uh, from hero. So, big shout out to him. I mean, he's definitely been a standout um, for this team. No one really knew what he was what he was capable of, but. He has definitely shown that he does fit well in this team. Even though, yes, he is feeling big shoes with, uh, with Leo taking a break. It does actually show that, I mean, they have definitely found their guy to possibly replace him if he isn't okay in time. Which obviously, which obviously I do hope that he is in time, uh, okay in time for next season. But it's just, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's from Fnatic. It's a great showing from this team all around and to from them to be basically a bit a bit of a laughing stock and a bit questionable as well in Madrid and Shanghai to now be possibly maybe a top, maybe definitely maybe a top five top four contender was a good showing for this team. But obviously we have, we know that champs can throw out some curveballs and that could definitely happen in this group. But we'll see. 
And finally, we have Pacific for our silver talent. He's supposed to day did lose against Leviathan. Premi was MVP, not Prime. It's Premi, I just realized. I mean, I'm not surprised, but they are very, very good at catching, uh, catching teams off guard. I mean, they play the wackiest of comps. I mean, they play bloody Neon and Yoru on Bind. That's already wacky enough. So... They def they definitely show that they can use their creativity for events and stuff. They even use Clove as well, uh, the Phoenix on a Sand, which is a which is a comp that they have used beforehand, and not like the Sand like Jet, Killjoy, KO, or so much as a like Omen um, comp that most teams play on a Sand. And I don't know why that map hasn't been banned yet, but that's obviously a story for another day. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just an alright show in there from Talon. They are versing Team Vitality next, so that's going to be an interesting match to see who will get eliminated. I highly doubt that. I mean, I'm not too sure, of, I'll be honest, of what that matchup is going to look like, just because that it's such an unknown. I mean, Talon can definitely throw a curveball. Vitality, they are. They work around safe most of the time, so. I guess if they do shut down safe, they might maybe win, but we'll see. I mean, because we know how choky, I guess we'll say. That's a new word. Um, talent can be, uh, but I mean, we'll see because I'm a bit skeptical on this team as a whole just because uh, the comps are good, but they haven't really capitalized over it yet. Like, map one was very, very competitive. Map two really wasn't. DRX, they did beat out Crew Esports, Buzz was MVP, and we, let's just ignore map 1 and just have a look at map 2 and 3. Very, very good from DRX. Flashback, he was very, very good, very, very consistent um, for this team, and I guess it does show that this team is still, is still very good, even with some young players um, basically filling in some veteran, basically filling the shoes of some veteran players. So that's definitely a good sign there for DRX. Um, Marco's EIGO is still really, really good, and I was not expecting it whatsoever. So it's a good show there as well for DRX that they can work around Marco's IGL in, and they can definitely work around it. Uh, I'm just a bit worried when we get into the playoffs, if they obviously do make it. When we get into the playoffs, as we, um, where, you know, teams like, let's just say, Leviathan, Fnatic, uh, well, G2 Esports maybe. These teams that DRX haven't versed in a while. I'll be interested to see how they go against those teams. Just because that I am a bit skeptical on how they go. I mean, they beat out Crew, which was very competitive though. I mean, hell, map one on the bits was just a dumpster fire for them. But... They did mostly work back in Map 2 and 3, but I'm more interested to see how they go against, like, the top teams um, in this tournament. And finally, we have Gen G Esports, who got their revenge against Sentinels after their, after their tragic loss in Masters Madrid. Texture was MVP. And, yeah, it's just Gen G just doing Gen G things, just being the best team in the world. What else do you really expect, I'll be honest, from this team? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm really, really not. Yeah, just this team is so well-rounded. That's really all, man. I've never seen this a Pacific team being this competitive in a while, especially in champs. I mean, Paper X, yeah, were very, very competitive. Um, but other than that year, what other year would you really consider that Pacific were, or like, or I should say, like Asia Pacific, South Korea, Japan, were competitive in champs? Because, yeah, Pay Breaks were the last time to be competitive. DRX was pretty good in 2022, but 2021, no one was really there, I'll be honest. There was, like, no APAC team, I don't think, who even made it to the playoffs, so... Well, maybe X10 crew. I forgot about X10. There we go. But, I mean, Gen G, they are still favorites for this tournament. They should win this uh, if, in front of their home crowd, but we know how good Leviathan is. We know how good Fnatic are. We have not seen Edward Gaming, and I'm not too sure if that team is going to do well. So maybe Trace or FPX, if any of them do make it to the playoffs. But yeah, it's kind of, it's a bit rocky for Gen G, especially if they, uh, like if whatever team they verse in the playoffs, they could maybe shake against Team Heretics, especially 
But, I mean, they should easily, maybe, possibly win in champs um, in front of the home crowd. But, obviously, something can happen in champs. Like I mentioned before, like I mentioned before, many, 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 many times. I mean, hell, look at last year, especially. A challenger season has now basically ended for Split 2. Let's now talk about it first off. With, and first off, with the North America Split 2 playoffs, it was M80 who will be returning into Ascension, along with the return of TSM. Who will be uh, who would now have a chance to go into back into tier one and maybe did win against TSM in the grand final 2 0 and be and will also be the first one as well but that TSM will be at Ascension. So, results as follows we have M80 first, TSM second, then Moist X Shop 5 Rebellion in third, which everyone thought were going to be competitive, including Oxygen Esports. Fifth through six includes Dark Zero Esports and Blin Esports. Dark Zero Esports were like the first seed in uh, coming into this and they faltered. And the seventh through eighth inc uh, includes Fluffy Amos and Sad Esports. Latam split two results. It was Retta and All Knights who will be representing the Latam region at Mexico. Retta won against All Knights 3 2, while All Knights won again, uh, won against Azolius Laser also 3 2. Results as follows Retta, All Knights, and Zolius Laser, first to third, and now in fourth place was was uh was last year's representative 9Z team. Brazil split two results. It was the fifth and third seed from split one who will be representing Brazil. That being first, Galleries, who won against the seven the grand final 3-1, while two game esports will be in ascension via points. Results as follows Galleries in first, followed by the seven, two game esports, Sele Gaming. Fifth through six in, uh, um, includes Red Cannons and TBK Esports, XLD Esports, Hero Base Legacy, and Sega's Esports in down in ten. Thailand split two results. It was Full Sense will be making their uh, their Ascension debut after winning their against May in Thailand in, in the grand final three one. A full sense main title in first and second, followed by Zersha in third at last year's title and representatives. And now in fourth place is Sharper Esports. Vietnam split two results. It was an upset against, uh, basically heard across the world. It was Rapid Lo-Fi winning against the best team in Vietnam, Fancy United Esports, to represent, uh, basically to represent uh, the Vietnamese region in uh, Tokyo, which was a 3-1 victory for Rapid Lo-Fi. Fancy United will join them in split three as well in the C region. And I was lead behind first and second, which obviously was um, was a rapid low fly in Fancy United Esports, is Team Flash. Cyber King Esports, fifth through six, includes Lazy in Team Big Bam, Unicorn Cyber, and down in eighth place. Uh, uh, it, uh, it is Crocodile Tier. Japan split two results after a struggle in split one. Riddle what has won a close game against the first seed Fennel in the grand final 3-2. Uh, results as follows, R uh, Riddle, Fennel in third place, um, uh, it is uh, Sen uh, Sengoku Gaming, Mirage Gaming, Scars and Venom uh, and, uh, and Varel in 5th through 6th, Reject in 7th and North Eption in 8th. Philippines split 2 results, one of 2 teams who will be returning to Ascension, that being Naus Esports, after a close 3-2 win against Zoe Esports in the Grand Final. Zol will also join Nals in C Split 3. Results as follows Nals and Zol versus second, followed by Oasis Gaming, Just Us, Carty World, and uh, Old Sinking Cat 5th through 6th. Avernus Esports, Rank L Cuties in 8th, Tyrant Esports, and in 10th place, um, it is a sub a subversive. Finally, it is the Indonesia Split 2 results, and it was a second team returning. It is Boop Esports who got the revenge on Alt Ego in the Grand Final 3 2. Alt Ego will also join them in the C in, in the C Split 3 region. Boom Esports and Alt Ego was first and second, followed by RF Team, Bigatron, Arctic, the Hero Data, and Cynical. This Esports and down in eighth place, it is Le Craprod. So that's really about it for this episode of this week in BCT. Uh, mostly I'd like you guys now to like, comment, and subscribe. It will really help me, especially on this channel. And I'll catch you guys next time in the next one. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye.